He's Tony Dungy. Had Well, that's a great weekend. When you have one of his uh, former players in uh, Marvin Harrison make the Hall of Fame. Peyton Manning goes out probably with his Hall of Fame career with the Super Bowl win. And then Tony gets the call that he's now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Tone, very proud of you. Uh, let's start with the phone call. Uh, give me an idea what it felt like. Uh, it, was, it was crazy, Dan. Um, you know, they told us to be in our hotel room at 2.30, and sometime between 2.30 and 4, we'd, we'd get the, the message. And um, so we're, we're here, Lauren, my wife, and Justin and I, and just kind of waiting and waiting. And, you know, Peter King tweeted out that the uh, meeting was over at 3.15. <laughs> So then that's when you start getting nervous. Before then, you think, well, they haven't finished. Uh, 3.15, 3.30, 3.45, you don't hear anything, what's going on, and then uh, finally get a knock on the door, and it's David Baker, the, the president of the Hall of Fame, saying oh, congratulations. Man. It was just one of those most unreal moments. Emotional? Very, very. You think about you know your parents and your family and uh, everybody who kind of got you off on the on the right foot and Coach Noel and Denny Green and Art Rooney and Lamar Hunt and just all the people you've crossed paths with. Um, it's just uh, truly blessed by the Lord, Dan, to have some special people kind of pour into you, and and that's what you think about in in, in that moment. Now, when I present you at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, do you want it scripted, or do you want me to just go off the cuff? <laughs> no, you're good enough to go off the off the cuff. I'll give you some pertinent facts, okay. you know, just date of birth and uh, <laughs> all of those kind of things, and you can take it from. You're good at going off the cuff. All right, that's uh, the, I'm gonna I'm gonna book that late August there in or early August in Canton, August, Ohio. August sixth. August August sixth. All right, I got to write that down. August sixth. Note, <laughs> note to self: present Tony Dungy at Hall of Fame. All right, going into the game, what did you expect to happen? Just kind of what we thought. I, I thought it would be a defensive game, a close game. I thought both defenses would be the the dominant forces. They, they were just better than the offensive personnel on, on the other side. So it was going to be a close game, and I thought if. Carolina didn't jump out right away, and the game was tight. I, I thought Denver would would win it, and uh, it was that was a, a dominating defensive performance. I thought the one thing Carolina might be able to do is get Cam Newton on some design runs and let him be the factor. I thought Stewart would have a tough time running. I thought the man coverage would would limit some of the receivers, but I, I thought Cam might be a little bit bigger factor. I just didn't understand that they kept the same kind of offensive philosophy there that you knew that Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware were coming. And I thought maybe getting Cam out of the pocket, something that allowed him to roll out just something to it, because you were in like third and nine and 10 and 11 and 13. I mean, you're, you're in trouble. You're in no man's land there. And it just felt yeah. like there were no adjustments there. They dropped some balls early that, that could have helped them. But the one thing I, I may have gone to a little bit more is run some, some of those quarterback draws. That was probably their best play. Let Miller and Ware tee off and come up field, uh, run all that man-to-man -man coverage off, and then let Cam just knowingly, hey, we're going to escape this. I'm going to run, uh, design runs. But still, you have to credit Denver's defense. They had a good philosophy. The big guys inside didn't open up running lanes. Um, it, it was it was well done on defense. You coached Peyton Manning for, uh, what was it, seven years in Indianapolis. Uh, was there, and I was curious about this, and we talked about it, that Peyton understood his role, that he can't win a game. He might be able to have a couple of plays there. But to go from being the most prolific passer in history to being a guy who you may not want to throw the football, I mean, you got to have your ego in check in a situation like that. Um, was that realistic, though, for Peyton to realize? No, hey, I, I was proud of him because you're exactly right. Uh, he did what it took to win the game, and there he. I know it hurts him to be one for 14 on third down, but they were on some of those third and sevens. Hey, throw the ball away if it's not there. Run the last part of the game. He's calling runs on third and nine and just saying, you know what? We take 40 seconds off the clock. Britton Colquitt is punting great and pinning them back. Um, if we run the clock and, and make them go the long way, our defense is going to win it. And that is not, you know, that that's not his mentality, but that was the way to win that game yesterday. Here's Peyton Manning about not making a decision on his future. 
I got some good advice from uh, Tony Dungy, who's going into the Hall of Fame and my old coach, and he said, don't make an emotional decision. This has been a very emotional week, an emotional night, and I got a couple of priorities in order. I want to I want to go kiss my wife, kiss my kids. I want to go celebrate with my family and teammates. And I'm going to drink a lot of beer tonight, Jim. Budweiser, Bob Miller's buying. And uh, those are my priorities at this point. I'll take some time to reflect on the other. But uh, I'm going to say a prayer and a thank you to the man upstairs for this opportunity for sure as well. Well, you got mentioned before Budweiser, so you got to feel pretty good about that, Tom. Well, well, yeah, I was I was listening, and I said, yeah, that's good. Don't, don't be emotional. Take your time. Kiss your kids. Say a prayer. I was with him until the Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> no Budweiser for you. The, no, but uh, it, that is so special. And we did. We talked last Saturday, and uh, I told him that I was pretty convinced before our Super Bowl Forty One that that was going to be my last game if we won. Uh, but I got some great advice from Dick Vermeil, and he said, "Don't, don't do that. You're going to get caught up in, boy, this is special. This is great. This is the time. But uh, you'll, you'll know a couple of weeks a- afterwards, and, and hopefully he does take that time and get away, and then make a great decision." But if I gave you the final vote, if Peyton says, "Coach, just tell me, I'm, and uh, you're going to cast the final vote here of what I'm going to do," you would say what? I'm, I- I'm going to say do what John Elway did and, and go out on a, on a high note. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be hard to duplicate that. Uh, yeah, but Elway, nine Elway won one, and then he came back the and next. He came back, I know. <laughs> I know, and that'll be the other side of the coin. That's what he'll think. You know, we can put this together. I'll, I'll be one year farther along in, in the rehab process. We've got a great defense, and we, we can do this again. That That's the, the part that pulls you back into it. So we'll see what happens. What advice would you give Cam Newton with uh, that loss, post-game, how he uh, dealt with the press? What would you say if you were his coach? Yeah, the post-game was just, you know, showing that, that immaturity. He's a, he's a great young player, and he is going to be the face of this franchise, and they've been great while they've won, and it's been fun to watch, and people have said, oh, they celebrate too much and and all that, but I think they brought some fun and excitement to the game, but now when you lose, you've got to be able to handle it that same way, and you've got to come in um, like a professional and, and give credit to the other team and say, you know what, we are very disappointed but I promise you, we're going to bounce back. We'll be back here next year, you know, better than ever. Um, that was a little disappointing the way he handled it. But, you know, you have to learn and, and grow through some things. He's Tony Dungy, Football Night in America. Does your wife or kids have to refer to you as Hall of Fame? <laughs> Hall of Famer? I don't think that will be. <laughs> I don't think that will oh, be okay. said, no, not, not within the family. Hey, congrats. Congrats. Thank you very much, Dan. We, very, we did it. Special. Tony, we got into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> Could I have maybe a well, small little bus that goes along like a baby bust or something? Could you see if they could? Uh, we'll, we'll find that out. They're, they're going to tell us this morning how that whole process works and how it's done. And I, I'll see if, if we can have the little, uh, little side emblem there. That'd be maybe, nice. Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, what year are you going to give that? What picture from what year? You know, I'd I'd like it about maybe 1990 when I still had had some of the hair <laughs> going, but we'll 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 see. I think they do the current one. I'm not sure. Oh no! <laughs> How about mid 70s with a fro? Uh, that now that would be okay. That would be okay. <laughs> uh, safe travels back. Tell Lauren I said hello, and uh, of course Justin as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'll pass that on. Thanks, right. DP. Tony Dungy.